Hello everyone. Now, if you're here, you're probably trying to speed up your computer in some way or another. Now, this video will only be about Ready Boost and nothing else, although there are many, many other ways of speeding up your computer if you need to. So, before you watch any more of the video and waste your time, let's see if Ready Boost will actually help your computer or not. So, all Ready Boost is is something to take cash from the RAM and put it somewhere else, essentially. It doesn't exactly do that, but any cached services will go to your USB stick instead of going to your RAM. This frees up space on your RAM, meaning the other things can go on it and speed up your computer. So, what conditions will this actually work? Or, should I say, not work? So, the conditions it definitely won't work in is if you have a slow or outdated graphics card. Now, a slow out or outdated graphics card just means when you're in games or some other things to be honest it can't it doesn't have the speed to render the say 3d objects like if you're playing elite dangerous it can't load the ships or the asteroids or something like that so that will be one issue that you can't get around just by plugging in a usb stick of course there are other things ready boost can't affect like a slow or outdated cpu now, a slower CPU won't be able to load things very quickly, so your frame rates may drop in games, or it may just take quite a long time to load Google Pages. Anything like that is going to be CPU related if your CPU is old. And the final condition that ReadyBoost won't change anything. Say if you have a 7200 RPM hard drive, a fast hard drive, then ReadyBoost simply will not affect it because the hard drive is already fast enough to load things from RAM onto the hard drive when the RAM gets filled up. And the same goes if you have an SSD. An SSD is much much faster than even that hard drive, so things can load from the RAM to the SSD even quicker, meaning the effect will just be negative if it does try and use your USB. So, what is the most ideal situation for ReadyBoost then? The most ideal situation would be if you have below 8 gigs of RAM and you are running USB 3. Now, USB 3, because USB 3 is much quicker transfer, USB 2 is much, much slower, and so ReadyBoost will either take longer or not even be used at all if the hard drive is quicker. And now for a small warning about ReadyBoost. Since ReadyBoost is re reading and writing to your USB very, very quickly, then your USB is going to wear out very quick. Now, depending on what USB you have, it may be okay. You might have either a cheap USB that has lots of read and writes, or an expensive USB that, again, has lots of read and writes, but maybe even more. But if your USB is not very good, then it may break quite quickly from using this say within a few months. And now the bit you actually came for this video for, the tests. How did they go? How, did, how was the performance in them? Now first of all, when I was doing some behind the scenes and before recording tests, it made no difference whether ReadyBoost was on or off to in-game FPS. In two different games there was no difference whatsoever. So there was no FPS difference. Who cares? What does ReadyBoost actually affect? ReadyBoost, I found, mainly affects loading times. The only reason I actually test this is because I noticed the difference in loading times loading between tests. Now, the difference in loading times on Rocket League was quite extraordinary. Rocket League took about 50 seconds to load up with ReadyBoost turned off, and 45 seconds the second time I loaded it up. But with ReadyBoost on, it took 30 seconds first, and then 20 seconds the next time I loaded it up. I could only assume that the cache data for Rocket League was put on my USB stick, and that made it much, much quicker to load up the second time. So how did it go when I was recording? So when I was recording, the results were a little bit different, with the times and gaps between loads being a bit smaller. However, you can still see the difference, and it is made pretty clear. So let's have a look at the first set of results.
So now that you've seen the results, you can have your own opinion on whether you think Ready Boost is worth it for you. So, you can now take your opinions on whether Ready Boost is worth it for you. However, not quite yet. Let's have a look at some Nautica loading times. Loading times on some Nautica are known to be pretty bad. Not quite as bad as GTA, but quite frankly I couldn't be bothered to sit through a GTA loading screen twice in 10 minutes. So I went for Subnautica and even that I got so bored I ended up watching YouTube on my phone. Now I did cut out a large bit of the loading screen on Subnautica and I'll show you a screenshot so you can actually see where the cuts are. So yeah, that's where the cuts are and you can get an idea on how I did it and you can get an idea on how much I had to remove in order for the video to be a bit shorter. Anyway, let's get into the results on Subnautica. As you can see, again, a very, very big difference. So now all we have to do is evaluate whether it's worth you having Ready Boost on your computer. So if you're wanting to run Ready Boost, I'm guessing you're probably looking into gaming. Gaming with Ready Boost, not much point. It's going to improve your loading times, but at the end of the day, you're going to have to spend money on a USB stick every so often because it will break. You might as well just go out and spend some money on some better RAM or more RAM or whatever. Just improve it that way rather than using a USB stick. So what would I recommend Ready Boost for? I would definitely recommend Ready Boost if you are say a college student who needs a bit more performance when it comes to loading Google or having lots of tabs open at once. That will fill up RAM very quickly and Ready Boost will suddenly become extremely useful. And lastly, I will make sure I list my specs in the description so you can actually see what type of computer I have 
and compare it to yours and see how much difference Ready Boost might make on your computer. Anyway, I hope you learnt something new, and hopefully I will see you in the next video. See you then.